welcome back to Doki Doki Adventure Club. I I don't know what's going on in my life. I really don't. But we're gonna do this. I don't know why. May God have mercy on my soul. And we were right at the poem. So, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jump. Damn it. Uh, don't want that one. Uh, doki doki. Damn it. Uh, precious. I know that's her. Precious. Uh, perfect. Damn it. Anything with food. Uh, summer? No! God, God damn it. Waterfall. Oh my God. Romance. Heaven sent. Promise. Memories. Balance. Vibrant. Beauty. <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> Shiny. Um. Embrace? Yeah. Uh. Extreme. <laughs> Gotta be extreme. Happiness. Flying. Papa. No. No. I miss these kisses. That's one of my dogs. in the of my room. Bubbles? Damn it. Should have known better. Uh. Sunset. Yay. Sunset. I'm so happy. A little bit brighter. Another day passes, time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room. Oh, the Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Crimson Pickett. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, eh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Siori, Siori nervously receives her coin purse. Retrieves, receives, Jesus. Retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> yeah, cheapskate. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves with a one option. <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh. I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Crimson Forget to borrow me some money. What the fuck? 
That's... Don't get me involved like that, Zamori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. That's true. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Revolution. Retribution. <laughs> I was kind of thrown off on that one. That... Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. And she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Uh, after all, oh, I'm opening up my calendar for some reason. It is 101 degrees where I'm at right now. <laughs> you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> what? Whoa. Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. <laughs> Ow! What was... Eh, a, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant, candy, giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. <laughs> this is this a miracle? Are the gods... gods? Oh. Okay. It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Uh, uh, I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> that's Suki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez. Just to eat it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and wrapper and takes a big bite. I cannot talk today. So good. Mm. Siori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Siori off of her. Nope. Um. Sayori suddenly leads down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. <laughs> Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's probably popular after all. Eh, you don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. That's that, that's that woman's sass. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I hate the, I hate this. I hate every moment of this. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. <laughs> sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. 
You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Eh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. I passed out. I passed out my best study hall all the time, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Sing the song. Yay! That sounds so cool. I also, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Crimson Picade. Picade. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature-related by myself like this without a woman on my own? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and am listening in on Siori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to need to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Mm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Mm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place is if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? Got a point. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak what? At, oh my god. Did I? Oh! And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. Jeez, why did that not register in my brain. What's this? Siori is talking this is taking talk. <sighs> Siori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Uh, well, I guess we could cupcakes. Uh -huh. Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, oh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out all the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Siori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. True. Ouch. Sayori can put her mind into things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Jesus. <laughs> ah. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. Why? Why do I, I wouldn't make them? Uh, uh, somebody's that close to me, they're getting swung on. I'm sorry. No. Mm -hmm. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> hey! <laughs> You're staying up late again, aren't you? 
Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. It's not. But everybody knows that there's no real anime on that late, baby. Straight hentai. You gotta keep that shit on the low. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica over her. Jesus, why are you trying to ruin my, why are you trying to ruin it? Why are you trying to ruin it? It's true though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me, you look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? <laughs> not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? Really? That's... It's a secret. Secret. It's a secret, okay? It's just a secret. You won't understand, because it's a secret. I knew it! Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh. Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out around here. Ah, I run my fingertips down the side of Sierra's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is, is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look at your bow isn't straight either. Look, there's toothpaste stain in your collar right here. Where? Right there? There? Somewhere. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> As Vane can attest to, I really don't care about that. <laughs> hey, meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? <laughs> That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> hey. This is so funny. What? What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh, D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Eh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I started to fully close the button near her chest. Oh, that's why. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Eh, why does it feel so strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. <laughs> it's not worth it at all. Sayori the hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Bitch. Bitch. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do these things like this, and you would take care, and you would take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Shh. You're not. Why are you gonna cock block your boy? We get a. We gotta crack my twig like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. It's not a deal. No deal. It's no deal. My fingers crossed behind my back like this. No deal. <laughs> I guess we are better really 
I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. But I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh, Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! And then forget it. I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Oh, definitely Sayori. Definitely. Keeping the same. Keeping the Oh my goodness, this is so good, Crimson Fakir. Eh? I love it, especially after yesterday's poem. Eh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really, I really want to put this on my wall. <coughs> Can I? Oh. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why, because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even that Suki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Crimson Pagate poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is simply is, is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Just... Oh, you don't want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh, well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the little rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Siori, that's unexpectedly po poetic, it is. <sighs> it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Crimson Fikir. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? <clears throat> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all of my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put it I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Holy shit. There. Deeper and deeper, oh, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. 
and they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends, who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I can see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, and you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. Oh, God, shoot me. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Siori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright. Yuri. What's up, a girl? Ah, is it my turn? Mm, yeah. You always you know you always get Siori sloppy seconds. Keeping that in here. Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Mm, I see. A little, it's a bit different. I respect you for trying new things, different things, Chris for care. But you inspired, were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Siori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems at all. Why do you got to? I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. <sighs> Yuri, come on. I don't. Yuri! I'm so sorry for being I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I'd probably just do a terrible job. I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that. If you'd like to read it, course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. <coughs> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, as an an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger curiosity, the raccoon emerge. Oh god, I don't really like the way this is going. <laughs> The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. 
Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken into following me. Following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. Perish blood. Classic Pav Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I, I don't know if it's my fault, but I can, can't can begin to imagine what this poem's about. Uh, I, have, I have a couple thoughts. Non-virtual. Virtual me, I have some thoughts. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. I can't. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Crimson Fakir? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Yeah. Hi, Monica. I need something warm and bubbly. Hi again, Crimson Fakeda. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, I like this one. It makes me think of something Siori would like. Is that so? You and Siori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Eh, well, we may be good friends, but Siori and I are actually really different. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ended up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's kind of the vibe I kept when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected, right? Like we just got done talking about it. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you would want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <clears throat> Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise... It won't stop. Violent, granting waveforms, squeaking, screeching, and piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless 
form of meaningless. And then load me. Load me. Load me. What? Um, it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I'd never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Like choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? The game got really meta there for a second. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was weird. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I'd be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I couldn't think of it. This kind of reminds me of Siori's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you might as well be on the same wavelength. But you never really stuck me as her type. Siori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ah, oh, that was a little unnecessary. That, that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. You know, but, you know, I, I wasn't very nice to you in the last video either, so. Again, like yourself, Natsuki, don't care. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we kind of take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Jesus. I don't even know how to read this one. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she likes, if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. That's really fucked up. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit lo longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. Yeah, Amy's a fucking bitch and you don't like her. Because she likes spiders. I hope I hope she brings a whole swarm of spiders and puts them all over you, Natsuki. I really do. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like any would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. <laughs> I 
That's funny. That's true. No, we shouldn't hate on somebody for liking weird stuff. Yuri wrote about something similar today. As long as they're not hurting anybody, it's fine. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you, that people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her, even if her writing style is pretty different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in, her, in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. I like conveying emotions is, like conveying emotions is important. Ugh can't talk but i want to make people think not just feel remember that i'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too so look forward to it <laughs> okay everyone we're all done reading each other's poems right i have something extra i planned today so if everyone could sit at the front of the room is this about the festival well sort of <sighs> do we really have to do something for the festival it's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's just, that's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Puppy fight. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <sighs> oh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sior is putting in on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think that it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Siori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri haven't shared their poems with any have never shared their poems with anyone until just a few, couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And then, the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> I hate it. It's about expressing your feelings. <sighs> Being an intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do, and if it takes us standing in front of the room for two minutes of reciting a poem, then I know you can do it! <sighs> Dying inside. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think that's too much to ask. 
I think that Siori and Monica have been really trying hard to get new members. At least we can do is help them out a little bit. Come on, guys. Well, maybe. But... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. <sighs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Poor Yuri. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind to herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. Just she knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. And this is this something she's done before? Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siora looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. <laughs> that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to get a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? <laughs> I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called... After image of a crimson eye. Oh, hey. Hey, crimson. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri pa gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. <laughs> the poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirring, whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality. And <laughs> I instantly thought of Eight <laughs> Snap back, Yuri! <laughs> it glasses around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Siri so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Try to imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it will come out the best way. The best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice has made it was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheerly like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Siori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get so much more deeply into someone I thought I knew th through and through. Siori finishes and we applaud. I got something between my nose. I did it. Good job, Siori. <laughs> Even Crimson Fakeda liked it. I guess that's a good sign. 
What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Siori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely, but it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing this kind of, that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Crimson Fakir. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Crimson Fakir lower everyone's standards a little but before I have to... Fuck you, Natsuki. Fuck you. Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Oh god. I don't even know all the words I choose. <laughs> Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's not hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The podium... The poem of the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? <laughs> But anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little in unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, you, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is. So, well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. I'm, it might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning on tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. <laughs> I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Kinsen Fakir. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Sorry. I was pacing out. Heh. <laughs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, how we get to... I mean, Siori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. 
Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, I feel like I should save. Right. This is my actual first, because that, that order thing is never going to change. Um... Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, <laughs> she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Crimson Brigade. You think <laughs> you think about me too much, so it's hard to keep a straight face after I do that, that name. The way I say it. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? <laughs> the conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Siri to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy, Sue. Then again, the festival is only a few days away, and who knows what will happen in that time. And with that, Shenanigan Gamer is how I end it. Still nothing really creepy or anything. Um, plus, this will be the first video where my face cam might sh should be a little bit animated. Hopefully my editor gets on it. If not, well, then you can go eat a dick. Um, but I'll keep you guys. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.